Welcome back, everyone. Today we're looking at another interesting uh, transistor configuration, this time using two JFETs in what is called a mu amp configuration. Now, the mu amp circuit actually originates from the vacuum tube days where you may not have. Um, triodes that are very high gain available but you need large amounts of voltage gain and so what they would do is they would configure two triodes in this mu amp configuration so that two normal um, triodes that were not of particularly high gain could give you a very large amount of gain on the output and so our mu amp in this uh, brown sound in a box circuit um, appears in two different places. And this circuit, the BSIAB2, was actually super popular when I first started really getting into uh, DIY effects um, back around 2006 or so. It was one of it was one of the very popular DIY circuits, much like the Dr. Boogie and, um, you know, some of those other, I guess you could call them more vintage DIY effects at this point. Um, but the mu amp in this circuit is going to be this section right here. Okay. So it's this configuration of these two JFETs and with these handful of passive components that are going to work the magic of creating a very large amount of voltage gain for us. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and start walking through this. So on the input here, we have, a, uh, we have this very small capacitor um, to ground, okay, and a small capacitor going to ground is going to um, serve to roll off some of the very high frequencies. Um, you will notice that we don't have a DC blocking cap on the input. Um, it would be good practice to have one, but then we have a very small resistor going onto the gate of this first JFET here, and we have this one meg resistor that is going to ground um, just on this side of the resistor. Now this one meg resistor is actually really important to the mu amp. It's not, it's not just that this is a pull down resistor, this is actually the bias resistor for this lower JFET. One thing about JFETs is that when you bias them, you, you actually, when you're setting the bias, you are not necessarily just setting a bias voltage, you can also set a bias current. In fact, if you do a lot of the more technical reading on DIY effects, you'll find that there is a lot of discussion on, for example, what is called the IGSS um, current for a JFET. The I stands for current, GS stands for gate to source, and so it's it's the amount of current that um, gets drawn through the device. And so what we're actually doing here is we are setting, um, we are actually setting the, the voltage reference on the gate to be zero volts referenced, right? So this is essentially um, acting as our pull up or pull down bias resistor to ground, meaning we're going to keep this at zero volts. And when we keep the gate at zero volts, it means that the current that we end up biasing this device with is the IGSS of the, uh, of the JFET, okay? Now I'm not gonna get too deep into that. If you want to go read up on that, that is perfectly fine. I'm just going to try and keep this from getting too deeply technical. But the important thing is that this guy is essentially acting like our bias resistor for the lower JFET in our mu amp. Okay. And so what that means 
is that when our input signal comes in, if our signal swings up, that means we are changing the voltage from our gate to source, our VGS, if you will. Um, and so when that happens, it turns, when, when the input swings up, positive voltage, it's going to turn this device on a little bit, which means that this device is going to want to start conducting some current through it. Well, the real trick here is that the collector side of our J, not the collector, sorry, the, the uh, drain side of our JFET isn't tied directly to power and it's not tied through just a resistor. It's actually tied through this other JFET. Okay? And so this top JFET has its gate being set to one half of our supply voltage. And um, so what ends up happening is when this guy turns on and needs to start sinking current, the only place that current can come from is through this device, okay? And so this device is going to uh, turn itself on or off a little bit more as necessary to be able to pull the current through it that this guy is demanding. And what that ends up doing is that as the voltage on our gate swings up and down, this guy is turning is essentially turning himself on and off a little bit, um, depending on what is needed to satisfy the current requirements through this JFET. Okay, and the result of this is that if we take our signal from here, it the 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 voltage at this point looks as if these two JFETs are in a push-pull amplification um, configuration, meaning that instead of just a class A configuration where a single device is doing all of the amplification, these two devices are working together so that we can get more swing in each direction. If you're not familiar with the, with the designations of class A and class AB, I encourage you to go read up on them. Um, I'm not really going to, to dig into them here, but the, the point to, that I'm really trying to drive home is that when you configure these two JFETs in this way, the voltage that we see on the output here is much larger than if we had just used a single device, okay? So before we move further on down the circuit, we do have, um, you'll notice that we've got a we've got two different capacitors in parallel here and a resistor. These are actually setting, um, excuse me, they're, they're actually responsible for helping set um, that current that the device is going to look for. And so the, the capacitors give some frequency shaping and the resistor sets the, the DC um, limit there. Okay, and it's much like the uh, cathode in a tube uh, amplification stage. Um, you know, if you go and take a look, you usually have a resistor bypassed by a cap, which serves the function. Usually the cap will help um, improve base response and the resistor sets overall gain for the stage. Okay, so that is our first mu amp here at the beginning. Now, a mu amp is not a perfect device. It, um, it can provide very large voltage gain, but the output can get loaded down really, really quick. Okay, so we've got to be careful to make sure that we're not loading down the output of a mu amp too much. Now, in this case, we're not doing too much of that because we've just got, we've got a cap, We've got a parallel cap resistor here for a little bit of frequency shaping. We then have our gain potentiometer that drives the gate of the lower JFET of another mu amp. Okay, so here is a second mu amp. And so there's there are just kind of these 
um, components in here that are loading down the output, you'll notice that the gain pot is a really large value. And that's because the output here can get loaded down really, really quick. And so having a component that goes from our signal line to ground, we need it to be a really large value so that we're not um, loading down this output too much. But with the 500k, we're doing pretty good. A one meg would be even better if you wanted to, but you know, back in the day when this was designed, one meg audio taper pots were not nearly so common as they are now. Okay, so now we've got this second mu amp stage that, that we've got configured here. You'll notice that we have a different resistor here. We don't have any bypass caps um, off of the source of this bottom JFET. And you'll also notice that the cap here is uh, slightly larger than over here. It's not going to make a, th those two things will make it so that we get more gain out of this, but it's not going to be one of those things where we are drastically changing the behavior. We're just changing how it's biased and, and what the gain is. Now, because we typically have, um, passive controls for tone and volume, those are going to tend to load down the output of a mu amp really, really quickly. So what we end up doing in this circuit to avoid that is we have a DC blocking capacitor with this resistor. This forms a high pass filter. We then follow it up with this JFET amplification stage here. Okay. And in fact, if we wanted to, we could just make it so that it was unity gain, but um, we have this trimmer up here and this resistor down here where you um, adjust the trimmer so that your voltage on the drain is one half your supply voltage. That sets the bias current for the device so that we get uh, amplification through this stage. But what happens is that because this is a standard JFET amplification stage, it has a very high input impedance with a low output impedance. And this high input impedance is going to make it so that the output of our mu amp is not loaded down. Okay, if you want to avoid loading down something, you need to have a high input impedance following the output of your device that can get loaded down. Okay. And so essentially what we're doing is we're buffering this mu amp, but we are adding some gain there. And that is done just before we get to all of the passive shaping on our output. So then we come through this tone control here. For those of you who are really into dirt pedals, you will recognize this tone control as, um, oops, I actually missed the capacitor there. Let me redraw it or redraw the bounding box here. For those of you who are really into uh, dirt pedals and stuff, you'll notice that this is the Big Muff Pie tone stack topology. Um, you can change its response and the balance of it by changing the values of the resistors and the capacitors. Um, essentially what you're doing is your tone pot is a, a mixing potentiometer between a low pass and a high pass filter. Okay, and so you're just controlling how much low pass and how much high pass you have there. Um, after that, we come through two identical RC filters that are low pass filters, and that's to filter off some of the high end fizz that can be common in, um, in a distortion pedal. And after that, we just have our, um, our level control, our volume control on the output there. Okay, so in terms of the actual complexity and structure of this pedal, it's not wildly, um, it's not wildly complex. We have a mu amp. We have, you know, just a little bit of shaping and gain control here. We have another mu amp. We have a buffer slash amplification stage to prevent loading on the mu amp. 
and then we have all of our passive shaping and volume control. So that's all there really is to it. Um, if you want to read up more on MUAMPs, there are good articles out on the internet. Um, I highly recommend RG Keen's short article on it over at GeoFX. And if you liked the video, then I recommend that you subscribe if you're not already subscribed so that you're notified when the next one comes. But until then, thanks for watching and take care.